her nails, her nails of history. <laughs> Suva is a 1925 Ted Geary design schooner uh, built specifically for the Pacific Northwest uh, for Frank Pratt, uh, designed kind of by Frank Pratt. Uh, he went through a bunch of books. He, Frank Pratt did enjoy boating and, and the design of boating. And uh, up at his house, we've looked at some books of his notes on the design of the vessel. Schooner Suva is a very unique and a one-of-a-kind vessel uh, being built in Hong Kong of old-growth Burmese teak. There will never be another Suva. He's hired a real good surveyor and the result of that is, is going to be important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he did most of his work yesterday. Should be here any minute. Mix of the iron in 1925 in Hong Kong, I'm told, is a different uh, nails that uh, I had a boat built in World War II, iron fastened, and everything, they were all gone. These pulled, these are 90 years old and they're like new. So we're going to pull more today. Coast Guard has uh, uh, given us instruction where to pull and then we'll start pulling in about an hour. And this is going to be uh, important. If you look at it as a square nail, it's actually hand forged, meaning they're, they're hammered out by a blacksmith, you know, into that shape. Uh, instead of today's nails are like a con con continuous round rod and chopped off, you know. So these are all handmade. Huh? Oh sure. Yeah. The yeah. whole boat's whole boat hammer. <laughs> and I still have responsibility, as you say, as a surveyor to do the rigging too. All right. So what they're going to do today? Uh, the welders are going to dig into the hull and they're going to weld a bolt onto the fastener. Again, these bolts were built with iron fasteners, so what we'll do is we'll pull about eight of those fasteners uh, to see how the boat's holding up. Um, that's what the Coast Guard recommends, and once we pull those fasteners, we'll know that she's uh, sound and good to go. Uh, and hopefully we'll be on to the next step. So when I put the guns on the deck, lining up the grain, I wasn't being too picky. Most people are. Most people are. But I did. I lined them up. <laughs> you found one to pull. <laughs> I want to see how deep they were. Uh, you know, the uh, just can't be well enough alone. They are. That's what we call wood. a little more. So he's looking for the... They're about a half an inch deeper. They're pretty easy. They're for you. Too bad. Most are they're already very impressed with the position of the wall of the uh -huh. so they're asking for a minimum of fasteners to be paid. I'd like to I'd like to give them my my thoughts.
Joe made this custom tool just for this application, just for this kind of work. Looks like oh, a nail. I, I called one. I know where you so, Looks like it just put in, huh? That's That's in good shape. shape. That's in good shape. That made, that and that'll be 90 years. 90 years. 90 years she's been in there. Sorry, little fella. Now, do we put him back in? <laughs> I'm not above that. But yeah. We can do better than that. We can do better than that. Don't throw him away. Yeah. That's beautiful, just like the other ones. Yeah, that's fantastic. And just to, th to think, that's original. That's, that's original. Amazing. 90 years it has been in there. Yeah, oh gosh, it is so beautiful. Uh, it is so fine. Yeah. So on a boat this age, what do you expect that to look like in comparison to what it does look well, like? Well, the fastings deteriorate at, 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 at different points of the boat for different conditions, different reasons. Okay, so this one was way forward, uh, deeply buried in, in the, just the stem along the stem, and no moisture got to it because there's no real signs of any deterioration in it. So this fasting was, was at a good spot. Some fastings... Fastings go bad when they get a lot of moisture around them. Most steel fastings go bad for a few reasons. One of them is simply when salt water gets around it, because salt water is corrosive. And then also, they go bad further back uh, because they're subject to bilge oils. Sulfur and bilge oils eating steel fasteners. Sulfur eats steel, okay? So as sulfur and bilge oils, it, soak, it soaks into the wood, all the oily water, so to speak. It gets to the fastenings, gets to the bolts, and that's one issue that happens. So we know where to go to pull the worst fastenings, which is usually just underneath the sump right. forward of the engine on any fish boat. Right. We know where to go to find the worst fastenings on that boat and this boat because they're at the same place, same place. right underneath where the sump. Okay. You understand that? Yeah. Get the idea. That's what, where they go first. Yeah, that's where all the that collects. All yeah, the water yeah. The oil. So you start from there and say those are the worst, and from there you go further and further. And as you get further forward along the garbage, for example, the 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 uh, the, wood, the bilges are less wet, more drier, more stable condition. So the fastings will get better and better as you go forward. Okay. So that's kind of what happens. And here you go. Then from here, this part. Then you go aft. You may have more water collecting back there, more oils collecting back there. You may have uh, other things. You know, you can have things deteriorate. Um, because the sulfur's in these oils and where they're not protected. You know, you bury a piece of, bury this fasting deep in wood where no moisture can get to it, none of the elements can get to it, and that thing can more or less last theoretically forever. Forever, sure. Then you change the conditions and put it in an environment where it's subject to corrosive issues like salts, copperous oxides, and all that stuff, and the similar metals, the similar metals react to one another salt water driven by salt water and that result is called galvanic corrosion so a lot of things happen because of galvanic corrosion issues of dissimilar metals like stainless steel prop shaft which this boat has and then a bronze props design which this boat has so those create a millivolt electrical energy and that creates galvanic corrosion stuff that energy has to go somewhere. Right. It's going to eat metal. Right. So we put a sacrificial zinc on there right. to receive the energy, yeah. and then it dissipates the zinc, makes the zinc get smaller as the energy heats it up, yeah. and the energy goes away. 
But the problem, because the metals are in the same environment continuously, is slowly the energy, the millivolt energy, is continuous, and zinc's continuously eaten, and that's why you need zinc. And if you don't haul out every few years and your zincs are gone, then of course the energy is going to go into the, the softer metal, the next softer metal, which would be the prop. It's the prop because the prop is probably 80-90% copper. It's a copper alloy. Bronze is a copper alloy. All props are 80% uh, copper with an additive to make them harder. All of this combined with we and those guys and that were given a real good base. Real good base. Yeah. We just pulled a nail here, Lee, that has a little problem. So just, uh, just like a little bit of work. Oh, look at that, a little bit of work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right where you said we've got, you know, <laughs> right up in here, right here. Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably, you know, this part was buried in the plank, and then where it came out of the plank and went into the deadwood timber, that's where moisture got it. So uh -huh. moisture was leaking down from higher up, uh -huh. maybe from your aft deck area. You got sure. aft deck leaking. Right around there at the, at the yeah. transom, yeah. you see that. Yeah. You, you see, yeah. I bet you anything, that water coming down is helping to cause this that problem. Okay. It's, right. water, it's water coming down from higher up that's yep. doing that. At that juncture where those two timbers meet, that's called a fraying surface. What did you say? Fray, F-R-A-Y, -A like I-N-G. A fraying surface where the two two timbers meet and water can transgress through there, right. right? Go all through there and migrate down. Because you've got excess water, it's been coming in that tr transom, upper transom counter stern for a while, and it's going on down. And it's going down this way, because everything's slanted closer in. Sure, so it's, it's way down. Yeah, so yeah. that's a possibility that more fastenings in here could need to be done, because uh -huh. there's more wearing, because there's been water leakage up there. So there's usually a little bit of a reason yeah, for situations. Sure, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and we're certainly yeah. going to document them. I do it a lot. I need a picture. Electrical. <laughs> um, I, uh, the extension cord I brought out for you under there, you want? Yeah, I didn't know you brought it. Yeah, right here. I'm trying yeah. to do it on the other side. Uh, hey, Lloyd, I threw a, a, a wire toothbrush in your in your bag. Oh, there it is right oh, there. Oh, okay. Hey, I feel like you're helping. Okay, Schooner Suba is a 90-year-old wooden vessel. And some people may say, oh my God, she's a 90-year-old wooden vessel. Uh, but Schooner Suba is unique, being it that she is old growth Burmese teak. Her fasteners, her nails, her nails of history, <laughs> her fasteners are hand-forged uh, in Hong Kong, uh, hand-forged iron fasteners. Uh, the Chinese had a very, uh, their history of metallurgy is, is great, and Japanese, the Eastern, they really know how to make their metals, and those uh, fasteners that we did pull were, were great. Uh, the, the boat herself, being a wood boat, uh, and that age is in a wonderful condition. Her hull has passed the certification for the Coast Guard for our COI. Uh, we have an rigging inspection that has been done. Um, we need to tighten up a few things and, and work with a few things, but all in all, we can run her tomorrow and she's just fine. We ran her in a race last month. We had 20 knots of wind. We had the boat heeling over and as no pro worries, the mast did not break and uh, all is good. It is a wood boat. She's going to take love and going to take some maintenance. And um, I do believe, though, that she will work her way through that uh, once she's up and running and through grants and funding, we'll, we should, which should be okay. She is a wood boat and she will need a little bit of love and to take caring of.